Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Guys, I have not been on my YouTube channel, but I've definitely been recording reels and things like that. One thing I always tell you is I don't come on unless the Spirit of God leads me to, because I don't just want to be baffling on. Um, I have my little crystal on. I'm so excited about my crystal, bringing me peace and positivity. I truly believe that. I know that it's a mind thing, but... Um, it's been working for what it says it's supposed to do, but I just want to get on Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, give us mercy and grace and, and contentment and whatever it is that you called us to do, Lord. Father God, I know that some people may come on and say, oh, you shouldn't be praying. It's something sacred between you and God. Absolutely it is. And I spent a lot of time praying and seeking your face, Lord, when no one is watching. But these prayers are for people who may never pray or for people who just need a kind, special word of encouragement, letting them know that God is still with them and he is everlasting forever omnipresent and that's in Jesus name amen um, I was talking to somebody briefly about the school system and I can't get into it too much because I'm still in the school system right um, so I don't want to belittle or bash any organizations but at the same time um, I'm working for this school district and uh, everyone knows I was with MPS for 14 years so I stepped out of that um, and got into the charter school sector just looking for something different or just hoping that you know things were a little different than what I dealt with in MPS as why I left because things were just so hectic um, on a mental level it was just so much going on and it was a really hard time for me to try to balance out and find that peace um, amongst all the chaos um, and so I stepped into this sector thinking that things would be a little different and what I've learned is and what I was telling someone the other day is that we give our children like incentives, right? And I was like, I got to spend my own money to give them incentives, whether it be candy or little trinkets or, you know, an extra recess, whatever the incentive may be, which of course our extra recess costs nothing, but just buying things to try to buy, I guess, buy them in, right? Because that's something big that people talk about. It's a buy-in. You have to buy them in. Um, and so what we do is as parents, we buy them in by buying them stuff. If you celebrate Christmas, you're buying things at Christmas. If you celebrate birthdays, you're buying things at birthdays. You know, and then some people are getting stuff just because when school starts, you get new clothes for school if you can afford that, if that's something that you do for your children. Um, when summer starts, you're buying summer clothes, right, um, if that's something that you do for your children. And then in the school system, as teachers, we're giving them treats and trinkets. So, you know, you did a good job, so here you go. You did a good job, here's a piece of candy, which is super bad for their teeth. You did a good job, uh, you got good grades, so here's some money for the grades that you got, right? We give them these incentives. We want to buy them in. If you do this, you'll get more of this. And then what happens they become adults and they get into this world or they even become late teens and early 20s and they go to these jobs and they start to build up their own families and with their mate, they're looking for the buy-in. With their employer, they're looking for the buy-in, which we know their buy-in is their check, but they're looking for extras. They're looking for incentives because all their life they've been given incentives to do a good job. So where does it end at? We're giving them these incentives and then they're becoming ungrateful and they're expecting these incentives for doing what they need to do. They're expecting these incentives for having integrity. They're expecting these incentives for having good character. They're expecting these incentives for showing the work on time. They're expecting their boss to understand when they can't come in because they don't have a ride or they don't feel like it or they tired. They're actually saying this to these employers and they're expecting their employer to hold their spot. It's time to teach our kids that you do right and you do what's right because it makes sense. Because it's the right thing to do. People don't always have to give you things or buy things for you to do the right thing. 
A lot of parents think that buying is love. I buy them this. I give you all these things and you still are ungrateful. Some of the worst kids that I have dealt with are some of the most well-dressed kids. I've seen kids come off of a, of a suspension and, and have a $200 pair of tennis shoes on and a fresh crispy outfit. Am I saying don't buy for your kids? No. But, but why do they have to have the most expensive thing if they're not earning or deserving of it? All I'm saying is teach your kids how to work hard and to earn the things that they want. I'm no longer buying in or, or buying into people for them to do the right thing. I'm no longer buying into my students for them to do the right thing. I'm sorry, I just can't do that. So I don't know who needed to hear this word today. But it's time to start holding your children accountable. Teachers, it's time to start holding your students accountable. We shouldn't have to spend our money for them to do what's right. Nobody bought me into it. Trial and error, right? Trial and error. And a whole lot of praying and a whole lot of fasting. I was a troubled kid. I was horrible. I did everything that I shouldn't have done. Did anybody buy in? Did they give me treats and candy when I did the right thing? No, they didn't. And I feel like it made me a better person and it made me the woman that I am today. I mean, I was the only kid for eight years and my mom really took good care of me and she gave me things probably that she shouldn't have. And so when I, when my kids do the wrong thing and I, you know, punish them for that or I don't give, my mom said, well, you got it. Yeah. And I hit my head a whole lot of times because I felt like someone had to give me something or I was owed that. You're not owed anything. It's two things for show, life and death. Those are two things that's going to get guaranteed. So in the middle of that time frame of life and death, what are you going to produce? And what are you going to do for somebody else? That's all I got for y'all today. I love you so much. I wish blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings. And I'm praying the strength for you to hold people accountable. Hold people accountable and allow them to walk in their true purpose. Allow them to fall. Allow them to learn. Allow them to appreciate the little things. God bless you all. I'm touching and agreeing with you. Remember, you are the missing link. Get out there and gather your sheep. Be well.